Hello, West Bay Scholars. This is Mrs. Turner in the music room, and I thought I would do some music lessons for you to watch and listen to while you're sitting at home with nothing to do. I know that's not true. You have plenty to do. But just for your distance learning, I thought we would work on some music things. So the first thing we're going to do is our staff. And we have C on our staff now. If you'll recall, A was the first one who named a space. And C came by wanting to name a space as well. And he came and he said he didn't want to be on the bottom space. But he didn't want to be on the top. So he got on the third space. And when he got there, he was a little bit surprised. Can you tell? He was a little surprised because it was so high up there. And Dizzy D reminded him that if he got dizzy, he was going to have to close his eyes. But he said he wasn't going to get dizzy. He was just... Um, a little bit afraid of falling and so he said he would keep his chin down so he could feel the line below him and remember that the line is above him and he would be able to uh, stay there but he was going to have to be careful so of course G said we're going to name you careful C because he wanted to name the space C so careful C has named that third space and he is being very careful not to fall off what's in the listening box today I wonder I wonder What's in the listening box today? I wonder what it could be. The first, I have three instruments today. They're all in the percussion family. And if you remember, percussion family means you hit them or shake them or scrape them. And so the first instrument that I have is a scraping instrument that we played the last time you were in music. So let's see if you remember the name of it. Anybody remember? It is called a guiro. A guiro is a scraping instrument. It can be in lots of different shapes. This one looks a little bit like, some people say a rocket or a fish. And the guiro is a scraping instrument that you scrape. And I think we used it the last time you were here. And um, it, a lot of the guiros are different shapes, like an owl or a frog or an alligator. And you can just scrape them and it'll make the different sounds. The second instrument, I think we used this the last time we were here, is some people call this the monkey instrument, that is true, but it is called cymbals. Cymbals come in different sizes. These are similar, these are sort of small, but um, they look similar to all of the bigger ones as well. So, cymbals in the percussion family because you hit them. And then we have an instrument I haven't had out this year, and it's like the cymbals. And some people say it sounds like a bell, but it's called finger cymbals because the finger cymbals are very small, cymbal-shaped instruments that do sound like bells. You don't hit them like this. You hit them on the side, and it's a very nice, sweet sound. So, finger cymbals in the percussion family because you hit them. Cymbals in the percussion family because you hit them. And then guiro in the percussion family because you scrape it. Those are our instruments. Now, we are going to, since we're doing distance learning, we can't really play games together. So, I thought that I would do some listening. And the first person that we're going to listen to is... Bach, Johann Sebastian Bach. He's a German composer, very famous. He wrote a lot of music, a lot of music. You're going to listen to samples of his music today with me, four different samples, but um, there's so much music out there. If you have a computer and can Google Johann Sebastian Bach, or if you just put in B-A-C-H Bach, then you will get all kinds of music. By him, and you can listen to Bach music all day. But I did want to show you the difference in his instruments and our instruments. Bach saw a piano when he was 60 years old, but it was brand new, a brand new instrument he had never seen before. And I don't know if he ever played it, but he did not write music for the piano. He wrote music for the clavichord and for the harpsichord and for the organ. Organ was his instrument that he played at church every Sunday but he also played harpsichord and clavichord. So I'm gonna show you uh, the difference between those three instruments. I have it pulled up on the smart board. So 
So this first one that you're looking at is called a clavichord. It is a very old instrument before the piano was ever even invented. And it looks very much like a piano, except that it's small, very small. And people would have had these in their homes that they could play because they were so easy. You could just close it, it looks like a little cabinet. And then when you open it up, you could play. There are strings in here that you would, uh, that the clavichord would hit or pluck and then you would have the clavichord sound. This one happens to be for sale for 1150 pounds, which is about $1,350 if we were to buy it. I don't think I'm going to buy one, but this is a clavichord. And then um, the harpsichord looks very much like a piano, only smaller. It doesn't have the full 88 keys. This one has about 45, I think. But uh, you'll notice that the black keys are on the bottom and the white keys are raised. On our, on our piano, the white keys are on the, on the bottom. If you'll look at this keyboard, our white keys are on the bottom and the black keys are raised. But on this one, the black keys are on the bottom and the white keys are raised. And this harpsichord, do, it does have strings in it, but it doesn't have hammers like our piano does that hits the strings. It has little prongs that pluck the strings and it has a very different sound. And then the last instrument that I wanted to show you is a pipe organ. This organ, usually you have organs in big theaters or in uh, churches. And this organ has stops that you would pull out to make different sounds and it would pump air through these pipes and the pipes are what makes, ooh, what makes the sound. Let me get this back down here. So you can see that the keyboards, there's one, two, three, four keyboards and they all could be made to have different sounds. And then you would pump the, or the air would go, there's pedals down here that you would play with your feet. But the air would, whenever you push a key, air goes through these pipes up here, if I can get it to go up, and those pipes are what makes the sound. And there's, this one looks like a very big organ, probably five or six ranks of pipes. They, these would make the lower sounds because big, remember small is high and big is low, that's all science we must know. So small is high, these little ones would make the higher sounds and the bigger pipes would make the lower sounds. Okay, so we're going to go back over and listen to some music by Johann Sebastian Bach that highlights all of those instruments. Now remember, Bach did not play the piano. He did not write for the piano because the piano was not invented until he was almost at the end of his life. And so we're just going to listen to, the first song is a harpsichord song. So you'll hear the difference between uh, hitting the strings and plucking the strings. So here is a harpsichord. <laughs> because the music that was written then in that time would all be very steady and it could be a fast steady beat or a slow steady beat and we're going to listen to a slow one that he wrote that had a slow steady beat. Now let me tell you a little bit about Bach. He was born in Germany in 1685. He was very religious. His family was very religious. He learned to play the organ and the clavichord that I showed you and voice from his father. His, but his parents died when he was nine years old, so he was sent to live with an older brother and his wife. And they didn't really want him there because he was an extra mouth to feed, so they would have to support him. Um, but he was only nine years old, and there was nowhere else for him to go. His brother did, his brother's name was Christopher. His brother taught him music and continued his music education because he was very talented. But he, it was not a happy time for him to be there because his brother and his brother's wife sort of resented him being there, and they didn't treat him very well. When he was 15, he went to live at a school, a church school, at St. Michael's Church, and um, he accompanied 
the choir there, and he sang in the choir there when he was 15, and um, he earned a little bit money of money by playing for them on the organ mostly, but also the harpsichord. Um, he learned to play the violin, and he learned how to write music while he was at that school. When he was 22 years old, he uh, married a girl named Maria Barbara, and they had uh, seven children, and th three of them died as infants, which was very common back then because they didn't have real good medicines or hospitals. And, and so if a child was sickly when they were born, they usually died. And so he had seven children, and only four of them lived. And then not long after that, his wife died, Maria Barbara died. He got a different job being the music uh, person at a different church, a bigger church, where um, it was a very prestigious position. It was the choir leader and the conductor. So he had to write music for the orchestra that was there, for the choirs that were there, for the uh, every church service, and, and every choir, every orchestra in, in the four different churches where he was had to perform every Sunday. And so he was writing music all the time, trying to get enough music for every Sunday. Um, he, he met another woman named Anna Magdalena, and they were married until he died. And he and they had 13 children, and three of them became sort of famous composers, but all of them learned music from him, so they were all musicians. And his children and he wrote a book for Anna Magdalena called the Anna Magdalena Bach book, and um, in it, his children and he wrote music for her because she was a musician as well. And so uh, it was a, just a collection of family things that they did, the children writing music and the dad writing music and giving it to her. And, and there are a lot of piano pieces or harpsichord pieces in there that we played on the piano today. He was very famous as a musician during that time. And he wrote, for the next 27 years, he wrote for that church every for every Sunday service, usually four of the services because it was Catholic and they would do masses. And so he would write for four different services. He um, went blind in the later years of his life, probably because he was writing music in the dark almost. They didn't have electricity like we do. They He had to write by candlelight. And when you have uh, 17 children at home, um, you, there's not much time to write except after they've gone to sleep, so it would have been dark, and he um, was writing music, and so it's such a tedious thing to write on those little lines, you know, the staff, so um, he went blind. He died of a stroke when he was 65 years old, and he lived in Germany all of his life. Um, the first instrument that you heard that he wrote for was the harpsichord, and that was called the Brandenburg Concerto. We're going to listen to a little bit more of the Brandenburg Concerto. Uh, we're going to listen to an organ prelude. Let's see if we can hear the organ. Um, let's get on the right piece. Mm -hmm. 